The Prime Minister has defended his decision to backflip over plans to exclude questions about sexuality from the next census. Anthony Albanese has confirmed a single question on sexual orientation will be included in the 2026 survey after backlash over his initial decision to leave the topic out. Nothing has changed. Uh, we are consistent about having a common sense approach uh, to these issues. Uh, we want to make sure that everyone is valued, uh, regardless of their gender, their race, their faith, their uh, sexual orientation. And to discuss this and other political matters of the week, I'm joined by independent MP Daly, who is the member for Fowler. Daly, thank you for joining me. What do you think? Should sexual orientation be included in the census? Uh, look, I suppose, I mean, 4.4% of the population, my belief, according to ABS, identifies having a sexual orientation. Is that an important question for Australia in terms of developing policies for the nation. Uh, that's the government of the day's decision, really, what they, you know, what they should include, what they should be included. Um, you know, for me, um, you know, we've got the identity of a, a race. We've asked a question about race, religion already, uh, male, female. And that's an important determination in terms of the population. Um, but, you know, some people might think that's important. Others don't. Uh, for me, there could be other important questions, such as for small businesses, more detailed understanding of our small businesses, businesses in our community, more understanding of certain uh, of the different um, makeup of um, the you know individuals that are making up our Australian society. Uh, so perhaps you know I that I think at the end of the day, uh, if the government thinks it's an important question, then um, to include that's that's up to the government to make that decision. Anthony Albanese backflipped on this after facing backlash, including from members of his own party. What do you think of that? Was it the right move to back down? Well, he. My understanding is that the government, or um, you know, the prime minister, did go to the election promising to include um, the the LGBTQ um, into the census. So it certainly certainly looks like a backflip. Uh, and if he, that's what he he promised. And he's somebody that obviously holds to his promise, as we have seen in his past, um, you know, the, the voice referendum as well. So, yeah, this could be seen as a definitely backflip. Something else happening this weekend. The Muslim Votes Matter group will be launching its official national campaign in Melbourne tomorrow. So it's targeting seats with large Muslim populations where it feels it could gain ground at the uh, federal election, not by running candidates, but, but by backing candidates. One of the seats being targeted is yours. Do you have any concerns about them eyeing your electorate? Oh, look, at the end of the day, I'm not concerned. I think um, all votes matter to me. Uh, every single person in this electorate matters. So, um, and what's important to them, uh, you know, I've been trying to fight and raise issues around cost of living. And I think the cost of living cut across uh, race, uh, cuts across religion, uh, it cut, cut across any beliefs uh, that you have. Um, so I think what it is that's important to our community, in our community in particular in Fowler, is putting food on the table, is affordability of housing, is affordability of education, affordability, affordability of health care. Those are the important issues that matters to the majority of constituents. Um, so, you know, um, if the group you know, judge if they want to judge me based on what I have been advocating for that would help improve the lives, their individual lives as much as the community lives. If I've been doing that, then that's up to them to um, judge me on election day. Because the group has issued a range of what it calls scorecards, judging MPs on their stances on Gaza. It's claimed that you've only mentioned Gaza once in Parliament since October 2023. When you speak to people in your electorate, how much of an issue do you feel this will be when it comes to, to voting time? You know, I was the first person that actually called for a, a ceasefire, uh, and I'm sure those who followed me would know that. Um, and uh, as, you know, I spoke about Gaza uh, along with other people, parliamentarians and what we want to do to support, um, calling for the ceasefire, uh, calling for the release of hostages, uh, calling for humanitarian aid to the thousands and thousands of Palestinians that have been, you know, killed. Um, I, I can sleep with my conscience to know that I did what I can. 
Um, will the issues of Gaza be around in a couple of years' time? I mean, it has been an issue for many, many years. There are times that issues like that will flare up. People will get emotionally, you know, drawn to that. Um, but, you know, what, what is, you know, if interest rates go, go up, how would that impact people's lives? Um, if businesses can't uh, keep opening, what would that mean for employment and for, you know, people in our community? Um, I think those are the important questions for me, and I'm sure for constituents in my electorate, they don't ex they would expect me to ensure that I bring those um, critical issues to the federal parliament, so that they can actually have you know have a, a, a stability and certainty in their lives, and they can afford um, to raise a family here um, in in places like Fowler. So from my perspective, um, they can judge you know people who are you know, following the that that political group, uh, if I have done my job or not, well, they can cast their vote on election day. And on that topic, the cost of living, the big banks have been facing a parliamentary hearing this week. One topic on the table is debt and credit card surcharges and who should be responsible for paying them. So these can add a, another 10% or whatever it may be to the price of a cup of coffee. Is that something businesses should be absorbing? Can I say, I mean, I cannot believe that the banks that's pushing for small businesses to actually care the cost that actually banks um, have pushed on to small businesses. And as we all know, um, and I know that many local businesses in my community have closed closed their doors, and I really feel for so many. I, I've, I'm very engaged with my small business community here in Fowler, and they struggle a lot. People are not going out to eat as much as they used to. So to they're already having to uh, deal with the cost of high energy prices, uh, the cost of rent for those who are renting uh, their premises, the cost of insurance, insurance, insuring their business and their building, all of those costs and the cost of transportation of their goods, all of that, that a small business have to actually uh, carry the burden. And now the banks, on top of that, they have to pass on the, all these costs to small businesses. Surely the banks have to step in somehow to assist small businesses because think about it, small business is the engine of our economy here in Fowler as well as the nation. And if banks and government don't realise that, they are the ones that prop up this country. They're the ones that employ people, provide jobs for families. So I really ask banks and the government to really look again, what they, what are they doing to really assist small businesses to, to survive and to thrive, and especially in this very, very hard time. We do have to leave it there, but thanks so much for joining me. That's Dai Lee, the member for Fowler.